keep them in your home or love to see them in theirs. These are the creatures that bring us all together. Reptiles. reptiles. We're going to be delving into the experiences of reptile lovers from around the block and around the world. This is the Reptile Talk Podcast. Boom! What's up, everybody? This is Jeremy Turgeon from Brassman Reptiles. And I'm Robin. I'm Craven a Real. And this is number two of the double header. And uh, man, it's episode 98, bro. Dude, we're almost at that 100th episode. It we're may have taken us a little bit longer, but we're going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. We will have 100 episodes up before the end of 2022. That's just, it, it has to happen. Hey, Guaranteed. hey, done deal. Yeah, done deal. We got this. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So this episode, uh, if you're listening in succession, will have gone up. Uh, I think right after Thanksgiving, because um, our episode with Randall will go up uh, right now. And today's, I don't even know what the heck today is because I can't see anything that would have a calendar on it. Friday, uh, November eighteenth. There you go. The eighteenth of November, twenty twenty-two. Uh, so you'll be listening to our episode with uh, Randy. Uh, we had a great talk about everything dominican red mountain boas uh that were also not all just red um <laughs> and amazon tree boas and a bunch of other topics uh so hopefully you enjoyed that one this one is just me and rob and uh we're gonna talk about a few different things i mean uh this is certainly not our end of the year wrap-up episode by any means no. uh, because we still have half of this month to go and all of december mm -hmm. uh but I figured we've been fairly sporadic, uh, especially the second half of this year. So I figured we would take some time and uh, just kind of fill you guys in on some stuff and then talk about a, a various amount of other topics as well. Um, so, yeah. So first of all, thank you to everybody that's already here in the chat. I know there's a couple of viewers here. Um, hopefully some more people will make their way over from the, the other episode. Um and uh yeah you know the deal if you're on youtube you want to drop us a super chat feel free to do so um we'll highlight your comment answer your question whatever uh and, and just have a good time <clears throat> um so if you've been listening to some of the past episodes you know that uh we were posting stuff every week and that slowly became more sporadic as time went on and uh part of that had to do with a rob and i moving from new yeah. Hampshire, north carolina and then uh, B, uh, I started going on the road a lot. <laughs> so between my travel schedule and then Rob's work schedule and then trying to lock in guests, it was very challenging because he had three very different schedules we were trying to uh, work with. So if you've been hanging in all this time, thank you so much for the continued support. We really do appreciate it. Um, we're getting, uh, close to, I don't think we've reached it just yet, but we're getting close to a hundred thousand downloads in total. That's about a thousand downloads per episode, which is insane. Like, That's pretty cool. yeah, like you guys are amazing. Uh, it, it's awesome. Like we're getting, we get messages from people all over the world, Australia, the UK, Europe, I, I mean, just, just everywhere. Um, South America. I mean, it's amazing, you know? I'm so happy that we're able to bring this content to people literally all over the world. Um, Cause that's amazing. I mean, that's the best part about social media. You know, if there is a good part of it, <laughs> it's just the fact that you get to reach out to so many people literally all over the globe um, by just jumping onto a computer or a cell phone. Um, so, yeah. So hopefully Going into uh, the rest of this year, I have a, a larger amount of time off. And then going into 2023, I don't know what my schedule totally looks like, but hopefully we can get back to uh, close to weekly posting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I have, I've talked to a couple people who I'm like, uh, just scheduling for the end of the summer has been kind of wild for them. Um, and and I know a few more people who I I'm want to reach out to and see if we can get them on. Uh, and then I had my phone die for like two weeks and like all this weird stuff has <laughs> just been happening. So, um, I, I'm just like, I'm ready to get back into it. I really, uh, I, man, after talking to Randy, I'm all ginned up because <laughs> in a while. So it's nice to kind of be back in the saddle again. Right. 
Yeah. I'm oh man. Super happy about it. Um, yeah, and I still have that list. I just found the that list that had all the people that uh that we wanted to get on. And I know I made a Facebook post about it too. So definitely have a large number of people we still want to get on. I think that list had probably 40 or 50 names on it. So we've got plenty of content to come to you guys um, from reptile keepers of all walks of life and age groups and species kept, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I haven't spoken to him recently, but I'm excited about the prospect of still trying to get uh, Tom Crutchfield on. Um, get out of my brain. Get out of my brain. I was literally just thinking that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Tom would be great. I really want to uh, check in with uh, Steve Tillis again, obviously to have him back on the show. But uh, he is, even though I have his contact info, he's not the great at necessarily responding, uh, getting Eugene Bissett um on on the show i think that would be great um i yeah there's there's a bunch of different people that we want to get on and uh most i think just about everybody said yes it's just been a matter of actually planning scheduling it yeah planning it up. so there's a lot of content that we have to bring to you guys and uh we're very much excited for that um also want to give a shout out to our year-long sponsor black box cages um who will you will continue hearing shout outs about them uh going into 2023 um uh, because we haven't been posting consecutive episodes so they're uh they're, they're a little bit longer yeah 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 it's gonna carry on so you'll hear more about them as always uh if you are listening to this you will probably be hearing it just at the right time to check out their black friday deals if you're listening around black friday time when this episode comes out um so they have a sale that's going on for black friday and uh, they're always looking at, at new things to add to their product line so make sure you're checking out either their social media or their website or both if you want to be really informed um, and see what they've got going on because their cages are absolutely fantastic um and yeah i think that's a good generalized update for what the hell is going on. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a crazy year for us also as far as breedings and production mm -hmm. of animals. Uh, you know, it was great talking with Randy, hearing him talk about the Dominican Red Mountain Boas. That was like a, a, a passion project for him. You had Janet Babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The passion project for you. Um, I had too many babies because my entire existence is a passion project. <laughs> so many babies. So many babies. Rob, Rob graciously helped me take care of some things while I was on a, a two-week tour run. So, so he knows how many babies there are. So <laughs> many babies. Yeah, there's a lot of babies. <laughs> sorry rob That's okay. <laughs> oh god um but yeah so this uh this season's been been quite wonderful and i am excited about next season um breeding wise and next year uh continuing reptile talk and uh you know we're going to talk a little bit about that i think we're also going to dabble in talking about what seems to be a popular topic right now uh with a lot of people on social media which is the, the state of the industry mm. uh, you know we don't we don't have a, a state of the union address ever spoken but um we're, we'll certainly talk about that a little bit in this episode uh because going into 2023 it there are some things that people should be aware of especially if you're a newer breeder newer business um there's definitely a lot of different things to take into consideration going into 2023 uh but before we dabble into that uh do you have anything rob that you're looking forward to breeding this upcoming season i really am like even debating if i'm gonna breed anything this upcoming season because i'm just like i really i forgot how much i hate selling snakes so <laughs> like um uh, with the scrubs i was like i'm not selling them anyway so it doesn't matter and then with all the other stuff i'm like i really hate taking pictures of things and editing pictures and posting them <laughs> online and talking to 53 people who want to do you have a picture of the side of its under its chin and i need 47 pictures of each of its parents and like don't get me wrong i understand that people want to know what they're getting 
I just I hate selling snakes. It's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the least fun element of 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 this industry. Yeah. Yeah, so if I do any pairings this year, it'll probably just be for stuff that I can hold back and and not have to stress about selling things because I'm like, uh, I really don't want to deal with people. Hey, you got this list for 400 Can I get it for $100 shipped? And I'm like, dude, the last snake that I shipped out was $100 just to ship it. Yeah, And it was going four states away. It wasn't even going to the other side of the country. Yep. Yeah, shipping, shipping prices have definitely gone pretty high which yeah. is frustrating but uh yeah i'm in i'm very much in the same position i think i'm going to breed uh certain things just for holdbacks um for certain double and triple recessive projects and um outside of that I'll, I'll breed a couple of things just to have young inventory going into the next year but uh certainly not on the the numbers that uh, that i did this year because i think i produced 300 babies or so this year so i'm <laughs> yeah that, that was a, that was a lot and and honestly uh for those of you who have seen my reptile room you know that uh that was not even production from everything that was 50 percent of my ball python females that went uh 40 percent of my carpets and 50 percent of my my short tails and i did no amazons um and no colubrids so <laughs> there's there's two facets of my production that didn't even produce in 2022 uh that'll start to produce in 2023 and 2024 so uh yeah <laughs> it's a lot of babies <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah no i'm i'm good i'm good <laughs> Yeah, literally, I'm just, like, looking at stuff, and I'm like, I really don't want to make more things right now that I have to sell, so I'm just like, meh. Yeah. I was like, maybe I'll throw a couple things together just to see, but, like, this is still really early. I don't know. I, I feel like I, uh, when I've been breeding Bloods and Short Tails, I usually don't pair stuff until, like, December, January, or whatever, but, like, in the Blood Python group, there's tons of people who are pairing things right now. And I'm like, you guys haven't even cooled anything yet. Is I mean, maybe I, I don't know. I feel like people are just getting antsy and throwing stuff together, but I mean, they're getting locked. So I, it is what it is. I'm just very used to doing things a little bit later, I guess. And uh, I don't know. It just, I, I, I'm still in that. Like, I'm not ready to like go with summer yet. I'm like, <laughs> I just want to I just want to hold on to it for just a little bit longer. <laughs> I totally understand that though. I uh I threw a couple of ball pythons together uh cuz I have a couple girls that started producing follicles early. Uh girls that didn't go in 2022. They're mm. just they're just starting to cycle a little early. So I threw males in there just to get some preliminary action going, but I I don't plan on really pushing anything uh hard this this season until probably january ish um it's just so many babies <laughs> so many babies but i also think that's a good a good segue into you know what's going on in the industry right now um what are some of the market trends what are the some some of the financial trends and um who who you should be paying attention to, who you maybe shouldn't pay attention to uh, as far as where you're getting some of this information. And um, yeah, I think from my perspective, um, so Rob and I, are, if you don't know, are, are kind of in two diff slightly different facets of, of the industry, right? Rob is a hobbyist keeper who also breeds, but he's got a, a decent sized collection of snakes as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm breeding and selling full time it is my business. It's how I make my money outside of music. Um, so I also have a large collection, but I also need a large amount of inventory to be able to make sales throughout the year. So we have sl slightly different views, which is why I think this is also a really good conversation to have because um, we are probably seeing things slightly different, but there will also probably be quite a few parallels um that we've seen so i i know from from my standpoint um you know i'm breeding snakes we also breed rodents here 
um, not large scale, but enough to supply ourselves with rodents that we need. Um, but you know, we've got, uh, anybody, and I think this is probably the same for you too, Rob. Rat prices are insane right now. It's hurting me. <laughs> uh, no, it, it really, it really is. Um, rodent prices are through the roof. Uh, rodent food prices are through the roof, um, which is one of the reasons why rat prices are going up and mouse prices are going up. Um, you know, like great, ex- perfect example. When I first moved down to North Carolina, uh, the rat food that we were using cost about 17 or 18 dollars a bag um this most recent pickup i did uh the bags are now 27 dollars a bag Damn. so Damn. in one year it's gone up 10 dollars. that's almost a hundred percent markup from what it was before so that causes rat prices to go through the roof you know and i don't i don't need that many bags i maybe go through you know 10 bags a month or whatever but now that's that's a what was a hundred and eighty dollar expense is now a two hundred and seventy dollar expense every month, mm-hmm. you know, to just to be able to feed the rodents I have to produce most of what I need, not even all of what I need. Um, and if we get a lull in rodent production, which happens when temperatures go up, uh, then I need to buy not only am I buying rodent food, but I'm also buying more rodents. Yep. to supplement what i'm not uh needing to produce so that price just goes through the roof so then i've got three or four months where i'm paying x amount of money per month just to keep the rats alive mm-hmm. and i'm getting maybe 30 to 40 percent less production out of them so now i'm spending 30 to 40 percent more to fill my freezer or uh get batches of live rodents in to feed that adds up super fast, super, super fast. Um, so that is a problem. Uh, depending on where you live in the country, you've uh, maybe seen your utilities go up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know in the state of New Hampshire, utility prices have almost gone up uh, double, um, which is pretty crazy. I have a couple of friends who, you know, to run their house, the decent house might have cost 250 275 a month you know for a, a substantial house now it's costing them close to 500 dollars a month uh for for just electric like that's insane yeah that's insane. now you add having to keep snakes and heating enclosures and all that stuff like god that's gonna be a pain, a pain. um so the other element that we're seeing, of course, is, you know, the economy is in a weird place uh, mm-hmm. right now is sales for the most part are not necessarily wonderful. There are. And I think it's important to say a couple of things. Uh, if you follow certain breeders uh, who have really high end stuff, guys like Justin Kabelka and, and, you know, Bob Vu and whatever. Ozzy. Uh, right. Those guys that are producing ten, twenty thousand dollars snakes and are selling or are selling larger quantities of snakes, here's the one thing you need to to realize. Um, Just because there's an economic bout of turmoil doesn't mean the business stops, number one. But also what it means is if you've got the stuff that people really want, people right now are being very picky and choosy with their money, and they're going to wait until they see exactly what they want. So the guys mm-hmm. at the top are going to be the guys that typically will still be making money. Um, and as you go down that list, you'll see sales slow down. Um, you know, and in some instances, will come to a complete halt for a period of time. And you need to be prepared for that if you're selling. So if you're a new business and you've never dealt with an economic downturn, any kind of recession, if you missed 2008, 2009, good for you. But uh, it's a struggle. <laughs> yeah, it's a struggle because our our inventory is not something you can just throw up on a shelf and leave it to be. You know, it needs daily care. Uh, it costs just to have the animal costs money. Not even for feeding, but in electricity costs. Um, you know, so then you take food and and labor into account as well, and and it is costing you money. You know, very yep. quickly. Um, so you need to be able to either a 
have a little bit of that financial cushion where you can say, hey, you know what? If I got to hold on to these animals for an extra six or eight months, then, you know, that's just what I got to do and I got to eat it. Uh, or you need to be uh, working in your network enough, especially with like mom and pop pet shops where you can say, hey, look, I got these 10 snakes. I just I can't afford to keep feeding, you know, because I've got the rest of my collection that is breeding, you know, so, you know, you want to buy this wholesale group you know, are you, are you as the business owner willing to take the uh, potential financial hit so that you're saving money down the long, you know, down the line, or uh, are you going to stick to your guns and then potentially just even or lose money at the end of the day, if your sales don't pick up. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a few different things to, to be paying attention to. And I think it's, it's good to look at both sides of the spectrum, the people that are still making decent money you know and, and what they're doing and why they're doing what they're doing that is helping keep them making sales during this time but also look at the other side of that and with the people that are not making any money what are they doing what are they talking about and what's different between the two and what's the same between the two um and then realize that uh, the people, whatever is happening that the people that aren't making money are not making money for, a, you know, maybe a silly reason that you're able to pick out because you're paying attention to both sides, then maybe don't do what the people that aren't making money are doing. <laughs> um, but making those informed decisions, if this is your first season breeding and you're going into 2023 with a large amount of inventory left, that can be a little daunting uh, because every week it's costing you money, you know. Um, so how are you going to deal with that increasing cost to maintain your collection? If you're, uh, if you're a hobbyist that is produced just a couple of clutches, maybe it's not, not that big a deal. Um, you know, maybe you're, you're going to feel it, but it's not, it's not going to put you personally in a position of financial stress, um, where you can be like, all right, you know, this is fine. I'll be fine. And, you know, maybe I'll throw something up on Morph Market or, or make a post on my Instagram about like, hey, I'm letting this animal go. You know, if anybody's interested, you know, let's let's talk. Um, but yeah, so that's that's my blab about where I'm seeing things uh, in, in business land. Um, so, Rob, I'm curious to see where, what you're seeing and what you're dealing with um, from from hobbyist, but also with a large collection. Yeah, I mean, basically, people. I, what I'm seeing online is a lot of people just like, oh, the ball python market's dead. It's dead. It's dying. And it's like, it's not dying. It's it's definitely shrinking right now because people don't have as much disposable income with inflation and everything being more expensive. People don't have as much money to be, you know, tossing out on just buying a couple new snakes or, you know, they really have to think about their food bill and, and, you know, rodents and all that sort of stuff and electricity and all with everything just being more expensive. Now um, people are definitely being more selective with what they're buying. And like, I don't blame them. Absolutely. That's, that's just what yeah. it is. But there's a lot of people who got in, in 2020 when, the there was just checks being handed out and people yeah. were like oh an extra twelve hundred dollars i'll buy some i'll buy a whole bunch of snakes the stimmy, and, bre uh, the stimmy the breeders pe yeah the, the people who s were just getting in and selling stuff for the first time were like this is easy you can just sell everything and i mean it, at that time it was a lot easier to sell stuff and then now as uh the economy is a little bit slower and just ev everyday life is more expensive uh, you're, you know, you're competing with the same number of people or even more people now. Mm -hmm. And people are definitely more uh, picky with how they're spending their money, how they're spending their time and all that sort of stuff. So that is something that I've noticed. And there's a lot of people who are saying that, Oh, well, ball pie, the market is dead. And it's like, it's not, it's not dead. Um, it is definitely shifted a little bit and you shouldn't expect that the way that the market was last year is exactly how it's going to behave this year because there's so many factors that have changed in those 12 months. Like you're saying, your feed bag's going up a full $10, you know, almost what, 50, more than 50% of the yeah. initial cost is just like, that's crazy. And that, that goes down all the way down the chain. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, shows definitely are changing things uh, quite a bit as well. You know, where we're at, there are quite a few shows. So 
I just got lost on all the amount of shows that we got down here. Like, I think there's a show this weekend, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't follow any of it because there's just too much. It's oversaturation to me. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it is what it is. And people, I think the people are recognizing that. And then on top of that, there's also this huge push for people to kind of change up how they do things. And there's a huge push for people to do more naturalistic enclosures, uh, people to have less animals and just have bigger, you know, basically exhibits for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's still this huge push for uh, ball pythons and ball python morphs and that sort of stuff. But there's also a lot of people branching out into colubrids and frogs and isopods and invertebrates and all this different stuff. And, uh, you know, as those sort of things change, you just, it, people have to adjust and people who have put all their eggs in one basket are not able to adjust. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very true. That's very true. Diversity. Diversity is key for sure. <laughs> and not, not necessarily just in species, just in, in how you're uh, looking at income streams, you know, yeah. that diversity is, is key. Um, yeah, for I, sure. think, <clears throat> I think looking uh going back to the ball python market being dead comment you know i i certainly hear that a lot i see that a lot i was just talking with our uh mouse supplier the other day and i was like man you know you, you picked a, the the easy lane in the industry to make money and that's breeding rodents you know and uh what he said to me actually shocked me and i didn't think about it like this but he said you would think so but what I'm dealing with now is losing clients because people are dumping their collections because they're freaked yep. about the cost going up. And I was like, you know what? I didn't even think about that because I, I'm not in that position. So selling my collection or dumping a chunk of my collection is not anywhere close to the forefront of my brain. But some of these guys that only got, you know, maybe 20 snakes that are like, oh, my God, you know, it's already costing me $150 a week to feed these you know, now I got all these babies. Now it's cost me $400 a week or whatever. I can't afford that. I just got to sell everything. I just got to dump it. And now people like him are losing clients, you know, yep. so that potential $400 a week is now gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't even thinking about that, but that was something uh, interesting to take into consideration as, as well. Um, so this is, you know, industry wide. And then of course, you know, you've got, uh, cage builders and stuff that are dealing with rising costs of PVC and wood and just building materials in general. Um, so the cost of caging is going up, um, which is interesting going into uh, everybody wor working toward, well, not everybody, but most people working towards keeping these in more naturalistic enclosures going bigger. Uh, that expense is huge right now if you're mm -hmm. trying to get into it. And um, I, I know a handful of people that are, you know, trying to make that that change. And I've been not discouraging them by any means, because I, I think we need more focus on keeping and enjoying animals um, than just trying to breed them and make money. Uh, but uh, I have been telling them, like, wait this out a little longer. Wait for the economy mm -hmm. to settle because you'll be able to get. You know, if you want to buy a stack of four cages, that's going to cost you X amount of money. If you wait for the economy to settle, you can get six cages mm -hmm. once the price can settle down. And uh, you know, just there's there's that push to want to quote unquote be better, uh, but it doesn't need to cost you that much. You know, so if you if you've got things in racks and you're, you know, like all right, well they're functional, they work, the animals are healthy, they're happy, you know, they're doing what they need to do. Sit with that for a bit you know and don't put yourself in a potential worse off financial situation just because yeah. you want a pretty cage you yeah. know um so i think that's an element that that people need to look at too um and even i was just talking with uh tom at zoomed and uh and we were talking about uh sphagnum moss mm -hmm. and like it's still like super difficult to get moss out of new zealand mm -hmm. right now you know, and I'm like, that's why I still can't find this crap. But, you know, <laughs> you know, but uh, but all we think there's so much happening in the world, you know, it, it's it's crazy to try to keep up with with any really anything. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's a little troubling, but um, at the end of the day, you know, like the, with these people who are like, "Oh, I'm just gonna dump my collection." Uh, sometimes those get pieced out, and a lot of those people who just buy one snake, they're not buying from a rodent breeder. They're just like either buying from somebody who's local in their town, or they're just buying from Petco. Yeah, I went to Petco the other day. A small rat is fourteen dollars. A small live rat is fourteen dollars. Oh! I was like, are you kidding me right now? That's insane. Yeah, it is absolutely insane. I was oh. like, I was there to pick up something else. I don't even remember what the hell I went there for. I, don't, I literally don't. Oh, crickets for my, my geckos. And uh, I was like, I'm just going to take a look at some rats. I was like, I got a couple snakes that are a little bit picky and they really prefer live stuff. And I went over there and it was fourteen dollars for a small rat i was like get the hell out of here please do not no this is not okay never talk to me <laughs> yeah for real i was like i knew that they were expensive but that is obscene that's that really is ridiculous ah <laughs> uh, that's that's painful yeah that really but is. you know the, the it's i don't i don't even know like it's just it's it's very frustrating to me because like I do it as a hobby and so like I'm very comfortable just holding on to the stuff that I produced and I have had you know some people interested into buying some stuff but I'm not like really pushing to to sell stuff I'm like when I get around to messaging people and whatever I'll do it but like it's not a, a whether or not I can pay my rent you know is 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 not mm-hmm. dependent on this sort of stuff so for me it's like I kind of am, am part-time on that and it's nice when i make a sale but it's not something that i'm like really dying for and i just know that the stuff that i've got the longer it sits around here it's just gonna get better looking so it's gonna be worth more so i'm not super stressed about it but there are those people who have looked at it like an investment um even though they haven't you know budgeted or you know looked at all these different <laughs> factors um yeah. and then they panic when they see this sort of stuff happen but uh, man it is it's very multifaceted and i feel like uh we are in a bit of a lull right now like things went really crazy high for a second and then right now it's kind of shrinking back a little bit but eventually it's going to have to level level itself off a little bit and when we do get back to that point we'll see i think the shows will be better in my opinion um Mm -hmm. But I honestly don't know if if like cost of shipping things is going to come down because literally they they've shown that there's no real reason for these shipping companies to have tripled their prices. Like gas went up for a hot second and then went back down, and the prices for shipping went crazy high and they've stayed there. It's yeah. just artificially inflated so that the companies can make more money. And it's like, bro, yeah. if yeah. they yeah. think that they can hold <laughs> on charge. The fuel surcharge part of the shipping is like six bucks. So it's not, it has nothing to do with fuel. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, But it's like, if they feel like they can hold on to that profit, they're not going to want to let it go if they can avoid it. So it's like, it's just very frustrating uh, to, to see that sort of stuff. Cause it's like, you know, for the average, for, for someone who's doing it full time, they get a better break. They, you know, are, you know, have, buying things in bulk but you're sending out one box every you know couple weeks or you know months or whatever it just ends up being a lot more hassle than it's worth a lot of the time yeah yep yeah exactly um yeah and this is all right so this comment that just came in from amy uh this is uh, this is already happening she doesn't have it from a reliable source paper prices will be going up as well um, so this is this is already happening. Um, I know that uh, uh, the paper source at for uh, Nerd, one of the paper sources, has, has already gone up uh, on their prices. Um, Uline went up on their paper prices. Uh, luckily, it was not very much. Um, you know, not really enough for me to like lose my mind over. But um, you know, they went up on their paper prices. Um, so yeah i mean the cost of everything is is going up for sure um but yeah i I think um i think the biggest thing that people need to realize is uh 
though frustrating and certainly not ideal stuff like this is uh something like this is temporary yeah. you know this is like we, we you see when people talk about houses you know they're oh, eventually the bubble is gonna burst you know and that's that's economy wide you know it, it's not just the housing or, or anything like that once that bubble bursts you know things things eventually stabilize so this is the the turmoil of that and uh you know, like brian bartek and i have talked about this a few times you know because we he obviously been through multiple recession recessions um you know i was really starting brass man or uh, jnd reptiles uh that was in 2007 so my second year in business i was dealing with recession um yeah. you know so that was that was certainly frustrating uh but survived you know um and uh you know so this is not to say this is a walk in the park but this is familiar territory for for me um you know but it's frustrating you know it's frustrating especially when sales were you know slamming and crushing and now it's very much not that you know you, you need to be especially if you're doing this uh doing this as a business or even as a hobby that you want to be self-sustaining right yeah. where you're putting up your own pocket money into maintaining things all of a sudden you might need to be you know and uh and and that's frustrating and, and frightening for certain people um and understandably so but uh you know i mean i i certainly and i see it with some other things that, you know it's really easy to point at the the people talking about the ball python market because ball pythons really are a, a a way to understand what's going on in the industry but it's not the only way but there are some other people that are talking about uh markets not doing that great and things not moving as fast um but you know i think when it comes to when it comes to ball pythons i think one of there are two elements that uh that really come into ball pythons may, maybe three one is again what you're producing right like i was just saying like your your top dogs are going to be still able to sell some things um especially if they're doing exports um you know they'll still be able to move some things uh mm -hmm you know so that's part of that goes to okay so working with things that are popular right the genes that are popular the multi-recessive stuff and and all those things uh you know a, a smaller scale breeder like myself with just a you know a few hundred animals um you know i'm looking at okay i've got some some popular genes for ball pythons but I'm not producing the same things as those guys. I'm producing something that's, that's sort of similar. We've got some of the same genes, but I'm really working a project in this way. So that's one of the things that helps save me for certain projects and to be able to still bring in some sales is I might be working with desert ghost in, uh, in hidden gene Woma projects instead of doing spot nose and, and mm -hmm. all the other things. Climbing so in, yeah. yeah, you know, so it's like, okay, I want desert ghost and I really like how it looks with hidden gene Woma and the hidden gene Woma combos. So let me investigate that. I want to go look at that. Um, you know, so that's, that's certainly an element. Uh, I think as we see, regardless of where the economy is at, people who just, you know, drop a, a few thousand dollars to get, you know, like some pastels and some spiders and pinstripes and whatever, just to make some bumblebees or whatever. Those are the guys that are really losing their mind. And, uh, you know, maybe they got a clown or a pied somewhere floating around, but, but nothing really substantial. They're just creating more, uh, we can say pet quality snakes, you know, but there's a plethora of those out there. I, I don't want to say that they're uh, waste or byproduct. You know, I mean, in certain instances, people are breeding multi-gene animals. That stuff becomes byproduct of a pairing. But um, I don't want to say that and have it come across in a negative way because those animals still have value. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, Think, think about it. When I got my first spider ball python, it cost me hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars to get my first spider. Now you can get a spider ball or a pastel or a pinstripe for 40 bucks. Yeah. You know, that's a cool first ever snake for somebody in comparison, you know, a single gene coral glow or banana for $150. Like that used to be tens of thousands of dollars, <laughs> you know, back in the day. My you know, first bumblebee was seven hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, so it's like those those animals still have uh, 
a place, you know, and a purpose. And I think uh, the a lot of the industry, especially those who are caught up in the morph game, uh, look at them as byproduct and just kind of like, ah, you know, whatever, they can just go. And uh, I understand that mentality from a sales perspective. You're not going to generate you really much money. It's something you can wholesale and, and, you know, kind of forget about. But I think it's important for the people that are producing maybe a smaller number of animals to realize like, hey, okay, I'm not necessarily going to make, you know, $1,000 in net profit off of this animal. Um, however, it serves a purpose. And, you know, I'm going to charge $45 for this female pastel. And, you know, it's going to be this kid's first snake at the next reptile show I go to. And that to me is awesome because we need people to continuously be getting into the hobby. And if I can have a part in that, then that's wonderful. You know, so I think it's important to view things from that perspective as well, whether you own a business or not. Um, because I, I see in ball Python land, a lot of that stuff just gets written off. Like, Oh man, I didn't produce a, a desert ghost clown. The rest of this is garbage. And it's like, no, man, if you're if you're getting to the point where you see the animals as as BF because they're not a fifteen thousand dollar snake, then you need to you've already lost. Yeah, you've already lost. And and so is every customer you have. They've already they've already lost. You know. That's uh yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah, you know, and and you know, again, it it's not to it's not to negate the fact that as a business owner you need to make money you know, I mean, you need to be able to maintain your business. If you're doing this as, as your main source of income, then you need money. You need to pay your bills, whatever. I understand that a hundred percent. Um, you know, but I don't, I, unless I really have a surplus of inventory, I'm re- usually not in a rush to, to move anything. And, and I generally don't look at any level of my inventory as like, man, it's whatever, you know, like I'm, I, downstairs i got a female pastel granite head hypo uh baby that i produced this year and it's like okay that's a 70 dollar snake you know and i've put probably 20 dollars oh, worth of food into it you know so okay so if i sell at the raleigh show for 70 dollars, i made 50 bucks off that snake but chances are it's going to go to somebody that's you know, either they're trying to work a hypo project or it's going to go to a kid that's, you know, that wants their first snake and they just like that snake. And yeah. that that means way more to me than than really anything, anything else. You know, I mean, a yellow and black ball python for your first snake. Like, that's pretty cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, hell yeah. I think that's an element that we miss. It's, it's also one of the reasons why I like working with so many different species. Um you know, is with colubrids all the way through to the carpets and retics and berms and blah, 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 to get to every facet of the industry from the kid that's, that's going to get their first snake. That's so excited because mom and dad finally said yes, you know, uh, all the way to the guy that's, you know, got a hundred snakes at the house. And it's just like, that's a really cool animal. And I, I need to have it, you know, like everywhere in between, I, that to me just makes me happy, you know, so I, it doesn't, I'll, I'll never look at anything that I produce and be like, oh, well, that's, that's nonsense. You know, like uh, <laughs> Lenny and I were talking after we uh, cut one of his clutches and he, he, uh, he produced like a pewter clown or something like that, or, or a cinnamon clown or something like that. And, uh, you know, he was going for the pewter chocolate clown, which he, which yeah. he hit here. And, uh, you know, we we're like, oh man, a cinnamon clown. Uh, it was when we were sexing stuff. And we're like, oh man, cinnamon clown, oh, it's a male. And we're like, man, you realize if we hit this 10 years ago, <laughs> we'd be, be losing our minds. Losing yeah. Our minds, like, oh my gosh. And now here we are, you know, in 2022, and we're like, oh, it doesn't have chocolate in it. Now it's not the same. <laughs> it's just funny to think about. And it put it it made us laugh and and kind of look back and put things into perspective, like, man there's just they're just cool animals at the end of the day we're just playing with genetics of 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 a cool species of snake that people enjoy for for various reasons but uh you know it's crazy to think about we're so focused on the next newest thing 
that at this point, what we now think is commonplace, if we were to show it to our past selves, we would be like, that's not real. Like you painted that. Like, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's really crazy. So I, I think going into 2023, I think provides a, a unique, uh, unique opportunity for, for a lot of people. Um, I, I think like both of us are, are thinking similarly where if we're, if we're going to breed some stuff, let's breed some stuff that we can hold back for future projects where, you know, whether the economy was wonderful or is not great, like it is now, we'd still be holding that animal back. We'd still be, yeah. feeding it, we'd still be raising it up. So nothing is changing in that regard. Um, so it's a chance to push forward on certain projects, um, and then for for me, uh, also breeding a couple of odds and ends things just so I have some inventory. So when things do start to to pick up, you know, I'm not sitting out there like, well, now I can't pay my bills because I didn't produce anything to sell, you know. Um, but yeah, having that like, I'm going to do some double and triple hit things this year just to raise stuff up that I'm like, I would do it that anyway. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to do it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, buddy. Um, ooh, we're o- over Ad break. Over yeah. time. Ad break. Ad break. I just looked at the time. I talked too long. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back, guys. Black Box Cages, located in Buford, Georgia, is your one stop shop for all of your caging and rack needs. Owners Jen and Clint are at the helm of this fantastic company. With one of the shortest lead times in cage and rack manufacturing, Black Box can satisfy anyone's needs. From baby racks to V70s, arboreal and terrestrial caging to deep-fronted bioactive enclosures. You can find everything you need right here. New enclosure sizes and products are added frequently to their availability, so be sure to check back often. Black Box cages have tons of customizing options for lighting and heating. Along with that, cages and racks can be stacked with metal stacking dowels, and all cage joints are datoed for improved durability and stability. Most cage units are flat packed, but are pre-assembled prior to shipping to ensure a solid build every time. The Micro, XC18, XT3, BioG, and 3-Stack V70 ship assembled, and all other racks are shipped freight and assembled. The XR16 and XR20 model racks allow keepers to mix and match tubs. Fitting both Vision and Freedom Breeder tubs, you can mix the V15, V18, and V35S tubs, or the FB5, FB8, and FB35 CVSC tubs. This kind of flexibility allows keepers to raise their animals from hatchling to juvenile or sub-adult size before needing to upgrade into adult caging. Don't just take our word for it. Go to their website to see countless customer reviews and review videos from keepers all over. To learn more about Black Box Cages, follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Black Box Cages. And of course, their website, www.blackboxcages.com. Links to their socials and website will be available in the podcast description. Boom. So you guys already know the deal. Go check out Black Box Cages. And get a new cage because everybody needs a new cage, even, <laughs> in, the bad, even in the bad economy. <laughs> everybody needs a new cage. Uh, but yeah, man. So I, I, I just I think going into I think people are reading the writing on the wall, uh, but I, I think a, a large portion of people are maybe a little more pessimistic than they than they, they need to be. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And uh, there's not really anything that we're going to say that's going to change their mind at this point. You know, it's like <clears throat> if they're going to stick it out, they're going to stick it out and they'll see that, you know, for people who have been around a hot minute, they, you know, it it just happens. It happens. <laughs> and uh, if they don't, then, hey, they, they don't. It's it's, uh, it's just as it is. <laughs> yeah, ab- I mean, absolutely. That's it. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> I had to highlight this comment. Is Jeremy available for all your voiceover needs in 2023? Actually, funny you should say that. If you are in need of voiceover work, it is something that I'm going to be promoting more in 2023 because I've had a lot of people uh, message me throughout the course of 2022 about uh, the various sponsorship ads that that we've done. 
uh, and they're like, hey, you have a really good voice for that. So <laughs> I, I think it's really just because I have too much equipment to put my voice through. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can really tweak it. But if you are in need of promoting something, I would be happy to voice over, uh, do a voiceover for you. So he layers it at least three times to get yeah, the right. sound. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm stacking vocals all day, bro. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> bruh! Could you bruh. having to get the inflection just right every single time would be horrible, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, but funny enough, uh, you know, like I mentioned before, I think it's important, especially as as a business owner. But really, everybody in general, having multiple income streams is, is certainly something that helps you navigate times like this a little better. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and of course, that's certainly uh, certainly a challenge for a lot of people to really wrap their mind around. Or it's like, I work this one job. I can't, you know, what, how do I bring in another income stream? I don't have the time to dedicate to that. And, uh, you know, the reality is it takes some extra time and dedication to do whatever you're on top of what you're already doing. Um, I think uh, this, this would be a great topic of discussion to have with, uh, with Ozzy uh, because he's all about that multiple revenue stream, uh, generational wealth, all that kind of stuff. And uh, if you haven't checked out the first episode that we did with Ozzy, go back. I forgot what number it is, but uh, I love talking with Ozzy uh, and picking his brain on this kind of stuff. Cause when it comes to financial literacy, like, He's really dived into that. And what I respect and appreciate about him is, you know, you see, if you look at one ad for a financial literacy course, all of a sudden you get like 50 that start popping up on all of your social media and they're all the same pushy, aggressive, you know, you need to be doing more in your life and blah, 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 nonsense and like invest and you know, buy my 30 day online course that's going to cost you $2,000 of money that you don't have right now. Um, and I'll tell you how to get rich. And Ozzy's not like that at all. He's, he's very practical and he's very like down to earth with it. And, and it's just like, no, man, like you got to put in the work, but you know, this is how you do it. And I, I respect that a lot about him. Yeah. yeah. Um, Def- definitely makes it feel more attainable. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that's, uh, I think if people got it in that package, you know, if, if it was given to them packaged the way that Ozzy can, I think more people would be willing to uh, put in that work, you know, to be like, okay, cool. This is going to suck. <laughs> you know, I've got to put in some 18 hour days, you know, to make this, this actually happen. But once it happens, then it's like, okay, cool. You know, this is, this is maybe the best, uh, the best situation. Um the other thing I want to talk about, because we're coming down to our last 10 minutes or so, uh, this is episode 98. We're going to hit 100 episodes before the end of 2022. Hell yeah. What do you, episode number 100 needs to be huge, bro. So what, what, are, we, what are we thinking? What do we want to do? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, man. I really don't know. I, uh, I was thinking, I was thinking about it today, actually, cause I'm like, man, you know, a hundred episodes, like there's not a lot of podcasts that go a hundred episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a notable thing. Oh man, we got to highlight the man has just joined us. Oops. Mike Stefani. Hey, what is up, man? Appreciate your love and support always, man. Definitely, definitely do. Um, so I'm thinking, hear me out. Let me get your, your thoughts. Uh, so we can have like a primary guest or something like a big primary guest. Uh, but then we, and it, and we can go for more than an hour. I think it would be good to yeah. go for more than an hour, a hundred episodes. Um, I think we just send the join link to as many people we've had on over the past hundred episodes as possible uh, and just get them to jump on and just say like, Hey, if you got five minutes, just come, you know, come hang for five minutes. That'd be pretty tight. I'm just saying. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. I think that could be cool, man. Um, 
like in my brain okay we'll we'll talk about it why not we don't need to hold any secrets here but 100 episodes 100th episode guest should be bar check because we have yet to get bar check on here and it's bar check yes uh, i'm down Hell yeah, yeah. He's, he's always told me that he's down to do it it's just a matter of scheduling right now he's in i think he's still in california or he just got back from california he's been out there for days i think uh, he just got back yeah so that's you know that's been a thing but i would love to be like all right dude i know you you usually don't travel the last month of the year so <laughs> so let's get you on the podcast uh and then and then reach out to literally everybody else that we've had on this year or the last hundred shows and just be like, Hey man, hundredth episode is now like, yeah. If you can join us for a couple minutes, just say, Hey, you know, come hang. Here you go. Hell yeah. That, I think that would be pretty tight. I, I think that could be a lot of fun. Um, hey, man, that would, I hope. Yeah. I think that that's a good idea. It, it would just be tough trying to schedule and make sure that, people are not just sitting around waiting uh for for time and sl- time slots and everything yeah right right well then we just put 50 people on here at once and then it just gets no to- <laughs> <laughs> you get every, all, everybody's bluetooth delays and audio delays happening simultaneously. do you want to talk about feedback i would go nuts trying to uh trying to have any of that happen like trying to edit any of that audio like no no not a feeling um but yeah so i i'm thinking i'm thinking that maybe that's that's what we do for episode 100 um i think that could be cool uh and maybe throw a couple like random random names into the hat but i think i think bar check should be like our primary guest hell yeah um and then yeah we'll see see who else can pop in i just think that would be fun and and we don't even necessarily need to have a a topic because we can get brian on later to have like a bar check episode well that's the thing i i kind of want to have bar check on his own episode and just do his thing and then if we want to chop it up and do a hundredth episode where it's like a hodgepodge then i think that would be a lot of fun well, what if we did like uh what if we did a bar check episode that was episode yep. 100 and it was the usual hour and then and after then, that hour people can when he's got a dip yeah yeah you know so if we did a, a two hour special yeah right hell yeah um and then it was the first hour's bar check and then we just send people the link and say hey you know eight to nine eastern standard time we're talking with bar check nine to ten is the the free for all come hang say what's up you know tell us we're awesome because we did a hundred of these (laughs) and then keep it moving i want a cupcake i want (laughs) i want champagne i want all of it (laughs) i'm gonna put lights on all the buildings behind me like we're gonna make this a big deal yes yes (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the soundproof squares will just become lit up like <laughs> with that the sounds great. of music the sounds of music <laughs> oh my god right. i think that could be a lot of fun i think that we should workshop a little bit but i think that, that could be a lot of fun have like a a, a a amalgamation episode where it's just a combination of all these different things and and that sort of stuff i think that could be really cool yeah yeah absolutely absolutely i think we can have a lot of fun with that and it would just be it would be great to just see you know i mean and whoever can do it you know it doesn't need to be you know like hey if you can do it great if you can't you know obviously no big deal um (laughs) mike tuxedos for the both of you (laughs) i'll totally wear a tux i mean i don't have a tux but i'll wear i'll wear a suit i'll wear something nice you gotta get uh matt bowers's tuxedo romper from i i told him that i want to get one of those (laughs) it's not gonna be pretty but i want to get one of those it'll be better than the mankini from daytona the year prior listen man (laughs) that was critically acclaimed that's all i'm gonna say i I mean that's true it was (laughs) it was We've had some fun shenanigans happen over the last couple of years, bro. <laughs> oh my god! And more to come. Just wait. Absolutely. Just wait, everyone. 
<laughs> yeah. More absolutely. shenanigans to come. Jeremy. Yes. Now that we're winding down the episode. Yes. We have one very important question to ask you. Oh, gosh. Dealer. What in the realm of reptiles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you look in a mankini? Uh, <laughs> uh, no deal. <laughs> <laughs> what in the realm of reptiles has got you excited about reptiles right now not being in a mankini at any reptile related event okay um, okay okay <laughs> no um honestly honestly this this is the uh this is the big test year for me for the amazon tree boas so i'm i'm definitely geeked and uh, and jazzed about that um i've been making sure the females are getting food um you know and and uh they're gonna i'm gonna go through and revamp all their cages uh in in december um and just kind of get them into that going for for the next season so i'm really excited about that carnage is is up to bat um as well as uh as well as hellboy so two red animals uh going to i think i'm gonna put them each to a tiger i've got two different that's so okay let me let me get your opinion on this because i'm i'm a little i had an idea but now now again thinking about it i'm like maybe that's not a good idea um so i was gonna put hellboy to one tiger and carnage to the other tiger i hadn't figured out who to who just yet but uh and then i've got a high red bicolor female Mm -hmm. uh i was gonna put carnage to her Mm mm-hmm uh, I have a tricolor female. I was going to put Hellboy to, mm-hmm. uh, and then I have a pretty much solid yellow girl. Um, she's the girl that I tried to pair Hellboy up with this year that just didn't take. Um, I don't know what I was going to do with her. I don't know if I want to put Carnage to her um, or or not. So what are the other the other thought process I have is I. I focus all of Carnage's energy on the Tiger Girls mm-hmm. and let Hellboy play around with the others. That sounds so bad, but <laughs> honestly, I what I would recommend or what what my thought process is is that uh, Amazon males really, from what I've seen, they can do like one, two females, maybe. Right. That, you know, it would be tough to because they just they court for so freaking long that like by the time that you get them through two females, you may or may not be able to sneak them into a third by the end of the breeding window. I think that, yeah, your your best bet is to have one go to each tiger as your primary. Mm-hmm. And what I would do instead of doing the bicolor, the tricolor, and the yellow is kick the tricolor out to a different one and just do the bicolor and the yellow because you're more likely to get better color without diluting it with some of the patterning on the tricolor True. and that would be like tigers first or like do alternative like do do one red male to the yellow female and then carnage to the leopard or the the sorry the tiger Mm -hmm. and then have the opposite be the alternative so that you can get at least one litter of tiger calico stuff and then one litter of non-tiger calico stuff and then if the other one alternatively goes cool and it double doubles up but if you do uh, the tiger to red for both that i mean don't get me wrong red tiger stuff is always going to be fucking killer yeah. but uh you are more likely to get a little bit more variety with the and that way you can have stuff all the way from the low end up to the super high end as opposed True. to just having that higher end stuff i mean amazon tree bows you'll always be able to just sell just high end stuff but yeah it, it doesn't it i don't know it really, I, I, it probably has to do with condition too for the females. It's like which females are most primed, and those are the ones that would take priority for me. Right. And then kick them to whatever afterwards. Yeah, honestly, the uh, the tricolor is probably like the least primed of of all of them. Like she's at the she's Cut at the where she could you know easily go but in comparison to, yeah. to the tigers. You know, I like I've been babying those tigers because I really want to make sure that they both go this year. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, I've definitely been babying the tigers a bit. So then I guess the question becomes, 
which male goes to which tiger. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <sighs> Just sweating profusely trying to decide. Yeah. Yep. I think uh yeah, no, I think that's a good a good plan of attack though. I definitely think it's a good plan of attack. So I have I've only been doing preliminary thought processes, but uh yeah. I like I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that mentality. That would be my opinion, personally. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. All right, Rob. What's got you excited about reptiles, my friend? Dude, yeah, I'm going to say something that's not even reptiles, but I've been looking at tarantula stuff, and I used to have so many tarantulas, and then I downsized when I moved, and then I still have a few tarantulas, but, like, I literally was looking at some pictures today, and I was like, man, I miss having a whole bunch of freaking tarantulas, so I'm like, maybe I need to get some more tarantulas, and they're <laughs> so cheap, it's just like, oh, maybe I should get some stuff, but I'm, like, trying to just, like, come, I really haven't really bought things in a hot minute i i've just like been doing my own thing and not really trying not to spend money but like man i love tarantulas they're so freaking cool (laughs) so i've just been jazzed on spiders recently i don't know what it is but hell yeah dude i still have that strong flame so i've been i've been thinking about tarantulas a lot recently so that's got me all excited one of my tarantulas is right about to molt, so I'm like just sitting here staring at it every day. I'm like, you molt yet? Did you molt yet? Did you molt yet? <laughs> but yeah, that and then uh, Stephen Cush producing more scrubs. I mean, I don't know if I talked about that in the last episode or the last time that we talked about this stuff, but yeah, I think he had three clutches of Barnex this year. Yeah. Killer, solid, incredible, you know. He's, yeah. He gets all, all, all the praise. Um, yeah. Super pumped about that. Um, yeah, I just, I love seeing scrubs. And then honestly, I've seen a lot more people, uh, just getting into scrubs and getting interested in them, which is freaking awesome because I appreciate them, but I know that not everyone has as strong of a a appreciate them appreciation for them. And then, um, man, DW Exotics, man, he just picked up a scrub, and I've been talking to him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he's got – he just picked up a Barnack, and then he's got a Southern. And I was like, bro, just wait. Just wait because he's he's letting them settle in. He's doing everything right. He's just, like, letting everything settle, before giving them some space before he goes in and starts handling stuff. And, uh, yeah, Dre, uh, I was like, dude, just wait because as soon as you get to interact with him a little bit, you you'll fall in love with them. I I think that like anyone who takes the time to not just like oh I bought a scrub oh it hates me you know anyone who takes a little bit of time to like analyze them and and appreciate them they it's hard for them not to end up not being like one of your favorites or something that you could deeply appreciate. There's just something different about them to yeah. me. Like a lot of I don't know the people who talk about king cobras kind of talk about them in the same way. Uh, where they're like, it's just different. It's just different. And it's like, after working with King Cobras, I'm like, yeah, they're smart, but I don't know. I still like scrubs more. <laughs> <laughs> At least if I make a mistake with a scrub, it's, it's like, ow, that hurt. <laughs> I, I, I don't. It's not ow, that hurt. And I, now I'm going to get, now I'm going to go die. Like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still have all 10 fingers. So. <laughs> hey, <same. laughs> oh, God. Heck yeah. Hi, oh, man. So, Jeremy, if people want to find out more about you and look at some of the stuff that you're doing this year, uh, or this upcoming breeding season, where are they going to look for you? You can go everywhere. Um, yeah, go. you can check me out everywhere. Brassman Reptiles uh, on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Brassman Rep on Twitter. And The Brassman on TikTok. I changed it up uh, on TikTok. Um, you can still look it up, Brassman Reptiles, but I changed it up on TikTok because I use that platform for both uh again. snakes yeah. uh so i just put up that as the brass man um instagram is the easiest way to get a hold of me if uh if you want to get a hold of me and ask me questions about stuff uh and also where i post information about where i'll be going as far as uh expos which the uh raleigh november show is coming up uh the weekend after thanksgiving i will be there for that Hello. uh and uh yeah that's that's about it for me uh what about you what about you uh, where can people find you 
uh, look me up on Instagram at Rob is creeping it real on TikTok at Rob is creeping it real. Don't add me on Facebook. Uh, I Twitter is currently dying. So if you're still on Twitter, yeah. I'm sorry uh, that that <laughs> like platform's on normal. its way out. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Um, but yeah, it got, it got musked. <laughs> Ah, I win. <laughs> it got Nerodia musked. <laughs> musked on. <laughs> well, I know what uh, meme I need to make as soon as we're done with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Like, I have not thought about saying that until this very moment. And I'm very happy I waited until right That's- now. That's gold. That's too much. <laughs> oh God, yes. That's... A very niche audience will uh, appreciate well, that. But yeah. for those who do, they're all laughing right now. They're all laughing. <laughs> and if they're not, they should be. <laughs> Accurate. Jeez. Oh my oh, God, man. Well, this has been a fun episode. Hopefully people like it. And then uh, make sure you stay tuned because this 100th episode is going to be pretty bomb. We're coming up soon, faster than you know. All right, guys. Hasta la vista, baby. Take care.